Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well because today we're talking about music and today we're talking about Radiohead and we have a special guest, Andy's Rambles. Welcome back to the channel. How's it going? Hey, thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me back and awesome. uh, for this ex like excruciating exercise. But uh, I mean, it's a blessing in disguise, but we'll, exactly. we'll get to that when we start talking about the songs. Oh my God, yeah. So uh, we're doing our top 15 Radiohead albums. So Radiohead, they already have a best of. Uh, it was put out against their wishes. Um, yeah. But because they already do have a best of, we couldn't say we're going to make a greatest hits. I think if we were going to do a greatest hits, my list probably would have been different. Um as Same. opposed yeah. to, you know, my top 15. Um, but that said, yeah, this was, like you said, excruciating. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to you. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you how you came about Radiohead. And uh, we'll go with, uh, we'll start with doing our, our bottom three. So we'll start at 15 and go up by three. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I mean, I, I definitely discovered Radiohead around the Kid A um, period of time. Uh, Kid A going into Amnesiac and... Uh, I'd often heard them on the radio, like Karma Police and Just and Creep and Paranoid Android, mostly those songs, a couple of their ballad songs, too. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I I think I appreciated the the hooks to some of those songs, but I didn't really appreciate the subject matter and just how visceral the band were and how much more talented they were than a lot of the bands getting airplay. Um, because, you know, when you're that age, you're more into fun music. So I definitely remember hearing like optimistic and I might be wrong, like those amnesiac and kid a singles. Um, and then, uh, and then when I kind of grew up and matured a little bit, became a teenager, I remember discovering hello or sorry, hail to the thief and, um, and just being absolutely enamored with them. And um, that love affair has always kind of continued. Um, I don't, you know, listen to them every day in the, in the year, but when I do, like, it, it gets to be like this, like, it's a, a deep dive into the this, this discography, and, um, I mean, I always get so excited because there hasn't been any new Radiohead in a while, but uh, there's so much great solo wealth of material, um, Tom York specifically, but also the other members of the band have all done, like, some really good solo work over the years so um so that that always a pre that always um makes me appreciate you know not what we're missing but just uh the the facets of the band and the side projects and um you know greenwood soundtrack work ed o'brien like just just all the different facets of the band and even though they're not doing anything now we're we're still getting a wealth of material from the smile and and it's all great stuff like i I haven't been hating on anything they've been doing. Like it, it, it's just it baffles me how 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 good of quality this band has. So um, yeah, without any further ado, I think I'll go with um, "Burn the Witch" off uh, the most recent record. Uh, I had to show this record some love because this one is one of my favorite albums by them. But it's really hard to pick out standalone tracks like it 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 killed me to not include and this is kind of a spoiler but the numbers are true love weights because those songs are just exceptionally good and this is such a good dense listen from front to back it's almost like a pink floyd album you can't really pick out tracks uh you have to listen to it all the way through but burn the witch is for a reason like the clear first single um, I think it uh, it definitely charted in the UK. I'm not sure how it did here in North America because we don't really, I, I don't know, this kind of music doesn't do well on the radio, unfortunately. But there's just such a, this is such a great example of how they take a song and just build and build and build. And um, I mean, there's definitely some social commentary in the lyrics. There's some, you know, obviously witch hunt. Uh, lyrics and some Wicker Man imagery I'm getting, though that might be the music video kind of blending in with uh, with my memory of the track. But uh, the there's a great string section giving it a cinematic um, sensibility, and um, it's just ha it has such a cool percuss percussive sound that just kind of builds the song forwards, and then it kind of gets almost like the strings get almost hard to listen to like it's like an impending doom and then it just cuts out and it's like wow like what a way to open your record and um yeah so i had to give moonshape pool some love i saw it was your number one on your radiohead list and yeah, i was like my favorite yeah. like like that ha this has been my favorite a lot of times uh i don't know if i could ever settle on a favorite 
favorite Radiohead record. But when this came out, I said, this is the best thing they've ever done. And I don't know if that's a very popular opinion. So when I was watching your video, I was just like, yes, like he gets <laughs> it too. So there yeah. you go. So two fans of that record. Um, and then I mentioned this song already, but I might be wrong is going to be my number 14, oh, nice. um, which was also the first single from this record. Uh, it's definitely the first one I heard anyway. And um and, and this one has kind of a nice, uh, this is very electronic Radiohead, as is a lot of this record. Um, but this just stood out to me when I was very young, even though I wasn't a Radiohead fan yet. I remember hearing it on the radio and just going like, huh, like it almost sounds like an alien transmission. It's very electronic. And it was getting played between, you know, a post grunge song and like a pop punk song. And it's like, who are these guys and what are they doing? And they sound so just mature and alien and uh anyway it almost sounds like a kraut rock song in in places and uh there's a lot of that influence on this absolutely amazing album they called amnesiac um so yeah so i might be wrong's my number 14 and then uh let's go with 13 just find the album here 13 is kind of a left field choice um probably my most left field choice and uh I'm going to go with Bulletproof, I Wish I Was. Wow. Um, this song really stands out for me on this album. And I mean, at, this has all the classics on it. Like there's there's no misfire really on this album, but there's something about that song. Like it's just so delicate and it's deceptively simple. Like um, it just has this soundscape that it's almost like Floydian. Like it, it sounds like a Pink Floyd. Like I think that's the guitar track and how they they interlocked all the guitars together, but it has a very Pink Floyd sort of 1971 metal sound to it. Um, and I don't know, it's just, this was not a standout when I bought this as a teenager. I might've even skipped this song back in the day to get to Black Star, uh, something a little more rockin'. And Black Star almost made my top 15 too. So that would have been a left field choice, but I just love Bulletproof so much. And um, it's just, I mean, this is true for lots of Radiohead, but it's just a devastating song. Like it, it just sounds like he was being torn apart, but it's so beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. And Tom York's always been about that contrast where there's beauty and death and all this stuff. And uh, it, to me, this is just such a memorable tune. And that's saying a lot because it comes right after just in my iron lung. So, and those ones have hooks and those are singles, but uh I mean, it just proves how great the album is when you have a deep cut like this one. And um, yeah, every time I listen to the discography now, this song, for some reason, it just there's something about it. It grabs me. So it's my left field choice on my top 15. But that's number 13 anyway. Awesome. Cool. Those are all yeah, great choices. Yeah. Uh, so for me, how did <laughs> I come? To, yeah, exactly. How did I come to Radiohead? Uh, I have well, two older brothers. One of them is four years older. And I distinctly remember uh, going into the living room one day uh, with much music on, as as you do in Canada, and exactly. the music, the yeah, the music video for Paranoid Android was playing. And to my little kid brain, I was like, "It's a cartoon, but it's not like a cartoon I would watch. Like, what what is this? <laughs> and it's like it's sad, but it's aggressive. Like, what? You know, I couldn't even comprehend it." Um, and then a few years later, I was going on a road trip. Um, he was not coming along, but he lent me a big stack of CDs. Um, there was like a Sonic Youth album in there. I think there was a Daft Punk album. Uh, I don't remember everything, um, but I remember one of them was The Benz. And nice. yeah, I was just drawn. I was like, this is, this isn't Weird Al. You know, this isn't what I'm listening <laughs> to. This is, there's a lot of emotion here. Not that Weird Al doesn't have emotion. Um, True you know, heart wrenching. Mature though. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is something different. And uh, I was pretty hooked. And then I think uh, maybe he'd let me okay computer as well. And yeah, uh, I think similar to you, um, they kind of became one of those bands that was, you know, my band, my thing. And then uh, Hail to the Thief was coming out. So I remember I have to buy the singles and I bought the CD singles and, and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, don't have them anymore. Um, Too bad. <laughs> yeah. So I'll show off two albums that I'm not going to talk about, but just so they can get a little a little showcase. And this is tough. But putting this oh, list I together. I think we're going to be in the same boat, too. Yeah, I knew I think so. there's a lot of good tracks on here, but I was like, do I really like anything on here more than other songs by Radiohead? So Pablo Honey, unfortunately, nothing from there. And I really like the song uh, You, 
and I really like you stuff look great. Yeah, and stop whispering. I really like, uh, and I like blow. Like, there's a lot of good stuff on here, but I think generally I just prefer pretty much the rest of Radiohead more. Um, and then this was a bit of a tougher one, The King of Limbs. Yeah, um, yeah. I did have uh, Morning Mr. Magpie as well as Lotus Flower as contenders. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just making tweaks, I was like, you know, I, I think I prefer everything else. Um, so we're going to go with that. So let's get to the top three, or not bottom three, I guess. Uh, so I'm starting with Lucky from OK Computer. Oh. And again, I was going through that list and I was like, how can I not have Lucky? How could, you know, do I really want, you know, Lotus Flower before Lucky? Well, I don't know. Um, so we're doing Lucky. And then I'm going to uh, How to Disappear Completely from Kid A. Um, again, I was doing that, mixing it with motion picture soundtrack. Like they both yeah. cover similar ground. Um, True. And then I'm going with uh, They're There from Hail to the Thief, uh, especially the drums, the drums on that one. Yeah, the drums on that one, just uh, just like a very hypnotic, as we're saying, Floydian kind of, it just, it gets yeah. into the pocket. Um, so sadly, nothing from Pablo Honey or King of Limbs, but those are still good albums. They're worth listening to. They're not, you know, bad oh, yeah. albums, you know. True. I prefer everything else more, but they're still good. Um, yeah, let me go with yeah, lucky how to disappear completely, and they're there for my choices. Well, I didn't want to cut you off completely, but yeah, I'm yeah. totally to to spoil my list a little bit too. I'm totally in the same boat, and there were a couple songs from King of Limbs that I was really, really close to putting on. They might have been in the kind of bottom rung, but they're still amazing and just classics to me. And and it it kind of killed me a little bit to to cut them but they were different than yours though i love your picks um morning mr magpie and uh and uh, lotus flower but i was yeah. gonna go with bloom which um i'm not sure if you're that into that one um and also um Saturday, oh, oh there goes radio head yeah, the yeah. um that then uh what was the other one uh separator the the closing yeah. song um yeah so anyway uh and then yeah i don't know pablo honey uh, I think I like Creep a lot better than you do, but I mm. could not, there's no way it was going to beat out these other songs. Exactly. Uh, I love Creep a lot and it was a great single and I love the guitars on it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, you was great. That's a great song, but mm. neither, I don't think either would be in my top 30 Radiohead even. So yeah, anyway, uh, without further ado, I'll go to number 12 and uh, you mentioned this uh, motion picture soundtrack. Um, and yeah, you're right. It does cover a lot of the same ground of how you disappear completely. Um, and I don't know that this one is just, I remember seeing this music video uh, and I think I was a little younger, like 11 or something. And it came on TV at like 12 o'clock at night. I don't know what I was doing up at 12, but the wedge was on. If anyone remembers that program, much music, the wedge, and they would play the more alternative, like, they wouldn't be playing Eminem and, you know, Dido and Macy Gray. They'd be playing stuff like this. And I, I you know, I, I was getting a little sleepy by then. And I was just like, wow, like, what is this? It's like a dream. And, you know, it's not just that the video is incredible. Like the 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 actual song is, is spellbinding and it's a great closer. And uh, it's very remorseful, of course, uh, as is this album. But um, what are the lyrics I picked out? Red wine and sleeping pills. Help me get back to your arms. Cheap sex and sad films help to get where I belong. And uh, and it's just like, wow. And I, I don't think I picked up on the lyrics, but that, at least at that time, but uh, that one always stuck with me. And um, like you were saying about one of their other videos, it's just like, wow, what an amazing video. Um, yeah, and I can always kind of see it when I listen to the album because I don't watch the video too often, but it kind of plays in my head as I'm listening to it and it, it's just perfect. And um, so that's number 12. And then number 11 is um, maybe a, sort of another left field choice, but it's also off Kid A and it's the title track. And it's such a, I don't know, for a lot of people, it, it would be such a non-event or you can't really take it away from the opener, everything in its right place. But for me, it's just like that kind of the creepy spoken word and the the kind of music box sounding uh, instrumentation. And um, it, it sounds like a spirit singing to you or something. It sounds very cursed. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, 
everything in its right place gets you into the the mood for the album and this really uh brings home like what this album is going to be going forward and you know it, it's quite you know it's quite dire and and bleak but uh there's just something about that song I, I haven't really heard anything quite like that before from anybody so yeah and then uh number 10 we're gonna go back to moonshaped pool here for daydreaming and um this one's kind of like motion picture soundtrack it's uh it's uh it, it sounds like a dream of course it had a great video by um Paul Thomas Anderson, of course, the director, and um, yeah, it's just it's it's another sad one. It 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 really sets the tone for the rest of the the record. Like like I said, "Burn the Witch" is kind of the the lead single, and then "Daydreaming" really sets the mood for what's going forward here. Um, yeah, so "Daydreaming" is uh, my number ten. We're in the top ten already. Awesome, getting it. Um, yeah, you mentioned the wedge. Definitely remember seeing a lot of Tool music videos on the wedge yes that's yeah, right yeah, yeah, Give that. yeah that's yeah, right yeah um cool so my number 12 is the song true love waits uh specifically oh, yeah. the uh the version from the i might be wrong live ep um i really like the one on a moon shaped pool i like what it does there but i think i like the sort of acoustic rendition on this one mm, and it, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool that it's just one of those radiohead songs that's been around for such a long time and I think even it's appeared on like different bootlegs and stuff in a variety of ways. Um, but I think the one that's presented there is probably my number 12. Um, number 11, I'm going with the opener. Going through this list, I realized how good at openers Radiohead is. Like all oh, of their openers are fantastic. great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, whereas, oh, I'm already holding it. Um, I'm going with Planet Telex from the bands. Um, just such nice. a good opener. The lyrics are great. It just feels as triumphant as radio can or Radiohead can. Right. Yeah. Um, and then number 10, uh, we already talked about it, but I'm going to go with Burn the Witch from Moon Shaped Pool. Again, I loved that video, but even just hearing it, I remember being like, all right, because uh, even in Rainbows, I wasn't totally drawn with when it first came out. I like it a bit more now, but I was like, I don't know. And uh, King of Limbs, I was kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just wasn't really sold. Uh, but then hearing, you know, Burn the Witch as the first single, I was like, okay, we got it. Because it's it's sort of a little, like the whole album, it's a little bit of everything Radiohead does. Like it's a little bit of Hail to the Thief. It's a little bit of that Kid A amnesiac. Like it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, um, I can see it. Yeah, so I'm going with True Love Waits, Planet Telex, and Burn the Witch. Nice. I mean, those are great choices. I, I, you can't really go wrong here, as we're as we're finding exactly, out here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're number nine here. So number nine is going to be the national anthem. So I'm nice. definitely picking a lot off this record. You can tell how much I like this one. Um, this one might have my favorite bass line in the discography. So it's got that going for it. It's got a really sweet instrumental uh, break and the horns. Uh, this is a compliment, but they sound really ugly. And, um, you know, this one also has kind of a, a, a bit of a kraut rock um, uh, vein, like vein to it, I guess you could say. And um, and the vocals are also very manipulated. It, it doesn't sound very human. Tom York was really um, doing all these different vocal approaches. And, you know, the band in general were a lot more electronic. They were, you know, playing their guitars and cutting them off really quick. And, you know, and, and that would go even further on Amnesiac, of course, which is the companion to this album. But, you know, lots of electronic um, experimentation in that. And, you know, the National Anthem is a little more rock based than a lot of this album, um, but not so much that it could have been a single. I think a lot of people would have non-Radiohead fans would be scratching their heads, but Radiohead fans, this is one of their favorite uh, from this record, I would say. But yeah, I've always loved the national anthem from Kid A there. And then uh, let's get my notes so I got it right. Airbag is going to be number eight. And uh, that's off this record that fell off the wall here. So yeah, there we go. Things are falling, but there you go. Airbag. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. So of course, um, this one, they were really inspired by DJ Shadow. Uh, you can tell with like the drum track and all that. And um, I mean, it, it kind of, it, it's Tom York and I, he, he did this in Killer Cars and some other songs, but it's very much about, you know, um, 
kind of a fear of, of driving and, and you have that airbag, I you saved my life uh, line there. And, you know, obviously the Benz is one of the best albums of the nineties, but you could just tell with this opener, like th there, there's something else like they've even up their game again. So uh, yeah. So airbag is, is absolutely stellar. Like, so that's my number, what is it, eight here? And then number seven, I'm going to echo what you said with Planet Telex. Um, yeah, Planet Telex. Uh, um, I mean, like you said, uh, their their openers are just absolutely fantastic. And um, you have the space echoes on the piano playing there. And uh, I mean, you just have this absolutely kind of uplifting chorus. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uplifting in, in music not uh never lyrically with this band but mm -hmm. uh and then you have johnny's um uh telecaster uh played through his tremello there and um i mean i i remember hearing this one quite early on as like a teenager and just kind of knowing without hearing the rest of the album because i knew just of course uh mm -hmm. love that single and video but i just knew like Radiohead, this is going to be a, a great album and this is going to be one of my favorite bands. And uh, that's how much it set the tone. Like it just and and, you know, it, it was like that ever since. Like I just I absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, it's very expansive. They're 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 going way away from that post grunge, you know, Nirvana thing they had going on. Pablo Honey, you know, it's a decent debut for sure. But this is just a whole other level. And um I don't think I ever got tired of this song. Like I just love Planet Telex. So yeah, so that's number seven. And then is that it or do I have one more? No, that's uh, it for now. Yeah, that's it for now. Awesome, good picks. Um, so for me, uh, this is the first one from this album. We're going with two plus two equals five. Oh to yeah. Go from that one. Um, it's interesting, listen to you. Uh, it's like very similar to sit down, stand up. Like it, structurally, they're very similar, but uh, I don't know. I think again, as the opener just works really, really well. I like that. Um, the next one, it's the only track from this album I'm going with. Uh, again, like I feel bad. There's a lot of other good choices, but cuts had to be made. So I'm going to go with uh, Body Snatchers from In Rainbows. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not wild about 15 steps. Um, even still not super sold on it, but I like Body Snatchers as a track. It's great. And then uh, I just have a stack of Radiohead around me. Um, <laughs> where yeah. is it? Here it is. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, you've talked about this one. Motion Picture Soundtrack is my number seven from nice. KDA. As we've mentioned, like a lot of Radiohead albums have that Floyd feeling and that it's really hard to like pull individual tracks out. Some albums, I think you can do that, especially the earlier ones, but Kid A, it's such a perfectly kind of put together album. Um, yeah. But motion picture soundtrack really stands out to me. Um, so those are my my nine to seven. We got two plus two is five, body snatchers, and then motion picture soundtrack. Wow, very good. Um, yeah, I kind of broke my own heart by not putting two plus two equals five on because, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of my favorite Hail to the Thief songs. And uh, I still remember buying that album and getting it home and, you know, you know, listening to it, listening to it on a Sony Discman while I was biking around, <laughs> around my, my town there. Um, yeah. So good memories of that song and album. Uh, but anyway, going to number six here, we're going to Paranoid Android, which is, uh, you know, probably one of their biggest songs actually. And, uh, you know, they would kind of remain in this period as a one hit wonder in North America Though alternative fans did know it usually, but uh, but yeah, they they uh, this has gone on to be one of their most well known songs, I would say. Um, and uh, you know, I think I don't know if this is true, but it was when I was growing up. It's their longest song. I don't know if maybe a moon shaped pool has got this beat with one of their tracks on that one, but it's long. It, it's got you know those nice slow sections that that rain down, rain down, come around. Uh, bridge part is like one of the most beautiful moments in their whole discography and then it just it, it gets super fast and it just plays with dynamics so much and uh you gotta have some of those lyrics uh like um uh the the chicken thing is is pretty devastating and also the um 
uh, what's the other one? The kicking, screaming, Gucci little piggies. Uh, it's just so memorable and it's so unique. And, it, you know, it's kind of like their Bohemian Rhapsody. Like there's so many different sections that never really repeats. And somehow it was a single. And it's just, it's absolutely fantastic, this song. Uh, number five, we're going to go with uh, another one you mentioned already, but They're There. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sorry it's so dark in here. You can barely see Hail to the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's the first single. It's just got some expert percussion. Um, this one was just so memorable to me. And I, I said earlier that, you know, I first heard them with the Kid A era and all that. But this is really when I jumped on as a fan, getting Hail to the Thief and listening to it front to back. And I didn't exactly get it right away. And I love this song. And then I bought the rest and was kind of regretful because I was, you know, just a dumb teenager at the time. And then I listened to it again, and then I had another favorite song, and then I listened to it again. And it was literally every time I listened to it, I had another favorite song until I finally liked all the tracks, which I think there's like 14 or 15 of them. It's quite stacked, this record. Yeah, um, yeah so it, it's actually quite, it's quite a simple song, but kind of like Burn the Witch, it just builds and builds and builds, but it's quite simple for Radiohead. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their, their best songs are builders like this and the numbers and uh, some of the other songs we've mentioned today. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I guess I got one more here. Number four, uh, Subterranean Homesick Alien. So it looks like I've, I've I've picked the top three tracks from this album in sequence. But uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's a play on the, the Bob Dylan song, but it's also a kind of a clever um, rhyme, rhyme scheme there. And this one, again, to go with the Floyd, like that, that the guitars that kind of burble up in the mix and, and and kind of like when you're listening with headphones it's kind of like it's all around you it's almost like you're being abducted like it's just it's brilliant music production and music uh comp composition and everything and um you know i i remember liking this one as, as i was younger but this has really become kind of a standout of this album to me i just love that song so much and i always look forward to it when i'm listening to their discography front to back so um yeah subterranean homesick alien let's say that awesome. six times fast <laughs> totally good choices All right as we are we're testing the patience of the zoom gods so i'll, I'll i was worried about these. that yeah no it's all good so my number six choice is uh glass eyes from oh, nice. cool. sometimes i think a little overlooked but i really like that one a lot yeah. um my number five Great. we already talked about it, is i might be wrong um from amnesiac i really like the live version too on that i might be wrong ep oh yeah that's a really good one yeah. um and then my number four we haven't talked about yet so i'll give a little more time is uh karma police from okay computer yeah on the I one hand, yeah on the one hand it's one of those songs where it's like have we heard it too many times and then it's mm. like well that's not the fault of the song like it's not the song's True. fault that people want to hear it so much you know um it's just a great song. The fade out, I'm not always drawn into that kind of slow degradation, um, but I just really like the interplay with the piano and the acoustic guitar in that track. Um, it just works really, really well. Um, so for me, I'm going Glass Eyes, I Might Be Wrong, Karma Police, and now we're into the top three Radiohead songs. Three. Yeah, Oof. that's right. Wow, okay, here we go. Um, top three, so in Rainbows, um... Uh, has this one even made an appearance on my list yet? Such a good album. Yeah. So good. Um, but yeah, it's going to be Weird Fishes, Arpeggi. Yeah. And uh, Arpeggi, uh, this one this one has kind of a weightless nature to it, um, but it's very propulsive as well. And um, it, it's like one of the tracks I, I was talking about earlier. Like you, you really get the full effect of having a three guitar band because they all interlock and it's, it's just so expertly done. And it, it just feels like one of those songs where it's like, yeah, only Radiohead could do this. Um, and I have heard some good covers of it. But yeah, for like the original, yeah, only Radiohead. Uh, such a good song. Uh, number two is going to be Optimistic, which I mentioned earlier. And maybe it's part of nostalgia, but like there's no song quite like this. Um, it, it, it this It's beautiful. I mean, it kind of rocks in a very... Um, you know, low key way, but it also like, it just does something to me emotionally. And uh, 
sometimes I, I tear up a little bit. I'm a bit of a softy, but it's just, it, it's so beautiful. Like I, I just absolutely fall for this song every time. And, um, you know, I even remember hearing it on the radio and people were kind of scratching their heads. Like, what is this? Like, why are they playing this on alternative rock radio? And yeah, I remember even being impressed as a kid and I wasn't even a Radiohead fan yet. Um, and then that brings us to number one. Your number one Radiohead it, song. The number one, and number it's one. absolutely beautiful. It's going to be from this one, which is mm -hmm. pretty crazy because I don't know if yeah. this would be in my top three Radiohead records, but uh, but this song, Pyramid Song, oh my God. Like, just mm -hmm. talk about beauty and uh, and it just sounds like a dream. It just sounds like you're ascending, kind of. Um, but yeah, it just does something to me. And it, it was hard to pick a number one, but this just does something to me that ev even all the other ones, like it just gives me chills. And this is like, you know, we're talking 17 years ago, 18 years ago. Like how many times have we heard this song now, you and I, like as fans? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, when you couple it again with the video, like this is one band where you actually do want to watch their music videos um, because yeah, it's it's just got this beautiful nature and um, it, it feels just as aquatic as it does spacey. And um, I, th I think it's just their songwriting at the, the height of their powers. Like it, it just does something to me. I can't even explain, but it's just, it's otherworldly. And um, it's, it's Radiohead to a T. Like, you know, I've even got people that don't like Radiohead are like, that is one beautiful song. So yeah, converts maybe. Great pick, great pick. All right, my number three. I love how different our lists are. Um, yeah. yeah. So my number three, uh, this is a single I did find recently, is uh, Fake Plastic Trees. Mm. Um, just such a great ballad, so emotive. And again, the video, it's a very 90s video, but it really captures the feel of the song. Um, again, just such a heart-wrenching song. Um, this is beautiful. I mean, yeah, that's the one I'll tear up to for Radiohead. Um, <laughs> actually, this one too. I'll just Radiohead makes me sad. That's okay. Number <laughs> number two is Exit Music for a film. You know, uh, famously was it on the soundtrack? Yeah, it was on the soundtrack, I believe, for Romeo and Juliet. Or no, did yeah. they? they want, yeah, yeah, they wanted it to be there, and then they switched it for um, talk show hosts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but I love that song. That's such a great song. Um, again, just that very somber acoustic take on it. And then my number one we talked about already, in fact, we talked about it when we first started this, was Paranoid Android from OK Computer yes. Again. It, so good. It just sums up, as you said for Pyramid, or for Pyramid Song, it just kind of sums up Radiohead, you know, for all yes. of it. So exactly. we're, what we're doing is we're telling people, if you want to listen to Radiohead, check out Pyramid Song and Paranoid Android, which, you know what, put those two songs back to back. That gives, I think that's a pretty good idea of like what Radiohead has to offer. Yeah, because you got your rock song with your kind of chilled out song, but you're going to get goosebumps either way. So they exactly. just, they contrast and complement each other equally. They're just, imagine if they played that in concert back to back, like just absolutely stellar material. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So there we have it. We're winding down. Uh, any any last words before we're logging off or we're forced to log off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the forceful exit. Um, I'm yeah. going to just say to anyone viewing this that um, maybe because of, they don't have the name recognition, but check out The Smile because that's yeah. that's Tom and John's Johnny's other band right now. And um, you know, if, if you're missing Radiohead or I've heard so many people go, when are they going to do something else? And I'm like, have you heard this side project or this one or this one? And they're like, no, what's that? So I feel like just because you don't have that brand recognition, people are really sleeping on those two smile albums. And yeah, just put put the smile into Spotify or YouTube and you'll just be amazed. Like the, the new album is it, it, it's incredible. Um, some of the songs are rivaling some of the songs we talked about today. And uh, yeah, 